Got him. Got him. That's a big one. Got another. Another big one, finally. Really big, whatever it is. Oh my. Look at that big old musky, guys. What's going on guys, Bassin up Mama here coming at you with a new video. In this week's video, we got some absolutely insane action. I caught my first ever muskie. Well, technically not my first ever. My first big one and actual nice size one. I caught a 16 inch tiny little one forever ago. Not long after they stocked them the one time, but I don't count that. That wasn't a muskie. I catch bass bigger than that, so. That wasn't a muskie. But in this video, I catch my first ever muskie. It was a beast. It was absolutely insane. It was a wild ride of a fight for it as well. Also catch some nice bass and beat my biggest of the year so far with a six pounder. So that was pretty awesome as well. It was a big fish day. Out here on an overcast day, overcast conditions. And it was a really tough day. Also gonna show you how important it is to keep to it, keep grinding it out, and keep fishing because this whole day, I went five hours without a bite. Not a single bite in five hours. We got out there, fished quite a few different areas, didn't get anything. Then as you see, we pull up into one spot, which is where we'll start off at because I'm not gonna show you all the first five hours of us not catching anything because that's not interesting and yeah. But I will tell you what I threw a little bit. Threw around the spinner bait a good bit, threw around a crank bait a good bit deep and shallow, threw around a jig deep and wasn't working. So then I decided to switch it up and move to this spot and you'll see where we pick up here. Let's go. So first, I start throwing around the crankbait at all the high percentage areas of spots that I think that are gonna hold the fish the best around the bridge here. Then that wasn't seeming to work, so I pick up the swim jig. It is fall, so we're gonna be using a lot of bait fish oriented type baits. That's typically what you're gonna catch them on this time of year. Then again, that wasn't seeming to work either. So it was seeming like a slow day. So I decided to pick up the Senko, throw that down along in these higher percentage areas and let it sink and hoping one would react to it on such a slow fall in this deeper water. They got plenty of time to react to it and plenty of time to watch it fall in the strike zone. Nice one. Give me the net. The net? Yeah, give me the net. It's right behind you. That's a really nice one, actually. Can you get it? Actually, he's not quite as nice as I thought. Actually, he's not quite as nice as I thought. He peeled drag there for a minute. It's still like a four pounder though. Well, no, that's like a three and a half. Still nice though. Still a decent one. <laughs> Barely hooked. <laughs> there we go, guys. 
Check out that decent one. Another one off the old trusty wacky rig. Decent one. Just let him go. On down. <laughs> He's like, get off. Now, after this fish went quite a while longer with out any more bites. Threw around the Senko a bunch, threw around the crankbait a bunch, threw around quite a lot of other things. Fish shallow and deep in quite a few areas and then change spots, come here, start throwing around the crankbait and then I see a few scattered grass patches, decide to pick my chatterbait up and rip that around through them, trying to get one to react. With the day that it's been, I figured my only chance at catching nicer sized fish was to use a reaction style bait and I have to make one react out of pure instinct. Got him. Got him. That's a big one. Give me the net quick. He's not hooked good. Mm. Oh my god. Fix the camera quick. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> Look how freaking big that thing is. Oh my god. <laughs> That's probably pushing six. Yeah, he was barely hit. It just came right out. Yeah, no, I know. I saw I, he like hit it three times in a row. And the third time I got him. Oh my. Look at that beast, guys. Look at that donkey. Heck yes. Another big one, finally. That is what we needed today. Big old donkey like that. Heck yeah. Where's my scale? Over here. See how much this big old girl weighs. It's definitely a five something, at least. Got a big old belly. That's six on the dot. There we go guys, a six pounder. <laughs> I finally got a six now for this year. I'm gonna try to scale real quick. One last look at this big old girl. Heck yeah guys, heck yes. Huh? Let's let that big old girl go. There she goes. Got some blood on your pants. It's all good. It was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Have my phone. Yeah. Ooh. 
Gunner. Gunner. Okay. It's okay, I got this one. Okay. It's okay, I got this one. Okay. <laughs> you saw her phone? Yeah, I got it in my pocket. There we go, guys. About two pounder now. Off the same exact spot that that big one was sitting on. A little grass patch out there. And he was sitting right on it. Hitting it so hard that they knock it like a good foot forward. Both of them, like, they knocked like slack in my line big time. Now, after the quick success with those two fish off of that one single grass patch, I feel like I finally figured a little bit of something out. So I start trolling around the big flat back here looking for more scattered grass patches on the fish finders seeing if I can find any more and start trolling over to the other side seeing if I can find any along on the way. Really big, whatever this is. Oh my god, that's a musky. Oh no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Get back, get back, get back. Make sure both of them cameras are going good. Both cameras. Oh, I gotta go get over to the shoreline to land this thing, probably. You can't get like catching the missing things too big. He's way too big. How long did we get over there? I'm getting over there now.
still going good, right? Yes. If you can, you try and... What, this? Here. Do I step on this thing? <laughs> oh, damn it. I'll get it. <laughs> I can't lose this fish. This is the first one I've ever had to stay on this long. Pull that one up and start this one and take us to shore real slow. Pull which one up? Pull that one up. Just pull that pull. There. Yeah, just go right into the bag. Slow it up. Okay. Pull it backwards. Okay, just let it go, go forward. <laughs> Pull the other camera and get it on me. the motor back into the shore. Um, where's the key? Where's the key? It's in it. How do you start it? Now here, he or she decided she was going to give me one more slap. Look at that big old musky guys. Can you get it with my camera? Look at that beast guys. Gonna have to nurse her a little.
she goes. <laughs> Heck yeah. Sorry that was a crap fest, but that's my first muskie I've ever actually landed and got in the boat. As you saw, it was an absolute crap fest. Don't have the right net for that kind of stuff. Was out here bass fishing, but got my first one ever on the chatterbait. Holy cow. Okay, I'm ready. I'm happy now. We can go home. <laughs> Well, here we are at the portion of the video where I break it down for you guys a little bit. So, like I said, we fished for quite a while without a bite. Then we pull up into the bridge there and I start fishing around a couple different things and then decide to put on a Senko. I figured, if nothing else, the super slow fall of the Senko in this deep of water should get a reaction out of at least one fish. Well, I evidently was right because it only worked for one. Tried it at quite a few other places, didn't work. Threw a bunch of other baits. The deep bite did not seem like it was on at all. So then I started working shallow, started fishing crankbaits and spinner baits and chatter baits through shallower grass, especially grass that I did better on in the beginning of the year. That was holding a lot of fish, but wasn't seeming to hold them now. A lot of it was seeming to die off, so I'm assuming that's why there wasn't as many holding in it. So change spots to another area. Saw bait fish busted in this area, but couldn't get any bass or anything to bite. Like I said, threw around the chatterbait again there and spinnerbait, crankbait, even threw around the wacky rig a little there and a glide bait, nothing. Then make another run and finally get down to where I find some better looking grass that was still pretty green and some scattered grass patches. That was the big key. I was on this big flat with scattered grass patches and some of these scattered grass patches were out deeper in like eight to 10 foot. And it seemed like a lot of the fish were around that kind of grass patch. These lone grass patches that are in big flats like that out off of bigger grass patches like this was are big places to catch big fish. It's something I've learned over the years of fishing and doing this. As long as I have, I've caught a lot of big fish off of scattered lone patches of grass. And of course, it was on the chatterbait. Gold blade chatterbait on an overcast day like this was absolutely kills. It gives off a more natural flash to the fish, especially in this kind of a low light condition. And the muskie, yeah, that was a bit of a crap fest. But like I said, that's my first muskie. We didn't have the right net for it, weren't prepared for it, weren't catching it on the right gear that you're supposed to be catching it on. I was bass fishing, obviously, and the only way I really could land that guy was to go all the way to the bank with the boat and pull him up that way. And they're a really powerful fish, so he flopped right out of my hands and they're very slippery as well. So yeah, sorry about dropping him, but you know, Crap happens sometimes, guys. So don't ride me too hard about it. Also, for any of you musky lovers, fish lovers, whatever you wanna call, before you go and ride my butt saying, oh, that's a dead musky, dead musky, the dead musky for sure, blah, blah, blah. I've been out there every day since catching that fish all over those same areas, all over the lake, like I always am. Have not seen it dead or floating yet. So think we're probably good on that one. Did my best as I could but what more can you do when you're not prepared and you're not catching them on the right gear? But maybe we'll get the right gear and go out and actually target them so we can show y'all how we do that. <laughs> like this video if you want us to try to do that and we'll see what we can do there. That'll be a whole new venture if we do, so you'll be along for the ride and us learning all about that if we do. But like I said, if we get this video to 
100 likes, we'll do a full musky series and we'll go musky fishing adventure, I guess, and see what we can do musky fishing. But get this video to 100 likes and we'll try that. And most of all, if you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps push my videos along further with the YouTube algorithm. Also, you'll get entered into my giveaway. As soon as we hit 2,500 subscribers, we're gonna be giving away a fishing trip with me. So. Get entered in that by being subscribed to the channel. You can comment for another entry. You gotta like this video and you can share it on your social media page for another entry as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for next Thursday. Tight lines, y'all. Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented Being negative when you should be getting after it